Happy December 8th. 8 is a really cool number in particle physics uh, and the reason for this is because there are 8 gluons. Now gluons are particles that keep uh, hadrons together. So we know that at the centre of an atom we have a nucleus made of protons and neutrons and the protons and neutrons are made up of quarks and the quarks are held together with gluons. Now the gluon is a really peculiar particle. Uh, it comes in different colours and these colours are red, green and blue, but you also have anti-red, anti-green and anti-blue. And a gluon is made up of one from each set, so it can be red anti-green or blue anti-red or any kind of combination really, even things like green anti-green. Now because you end up with three colours and three anti-colours, you'd think that there would be nine gluons, right? You'd have red anti-red, red anti-blue, red, anti red anti-green, and then the same for the others, so you'd have blue anti-red, blue anti-blue, blue anti-green, and green anti-red, green anti-blue, green anti-green. But that's not what we see, we only actually see eight gluons. And the reason for this is because of the nature of the strong force. The strong force is represented by what we call special unitary group three. And this is all to do with the, the fundamental symmetries associated with it. So one of the ideas is when you combine two gluons, you end up effectively with a third gluon. Instead of having these two gluons, you have one gluon with, with slightly different properties. And you can relate all these things together, but one of the things you must do is make sure that the probability never goes above one. And when you do that, you have a special unitary group, and that removes one of these gluons. You no longer have the nine gluons you'd expect, you have eight. Now, it gets even weirder than that, because you can never see an individual gluon. And that means you can never see the colour combinations involved. You can never say that this gluon over here is red anti-blue because you'll never see that gluon by itself. And that means you can swap the colours around. So instead of saying it's red anti-blue, you say it's a mixture of red, green and blue and a mixture of anti-blue, anti-green, anti-red. And this leads to all kinds of weird situations where you have hadrons interacting. So you'll have two protons colliding, they're carrying gluons with them. The nature of the strong force says if you've got enough energy to radiate a gluon, you'll radiate a gluon. And then you've got to apply all the symmetries associated with it to say you can swap these two colours and nobody would know the difference. You can swap these gluons around and nobody would know. You can take these two gluons and turn them into one gluon. All these weird things happen. And it makes the strong force extremely difficult to predict. Uh, that's one of the reasons why it takes us uh, a very long time to simulate events in the huge particle accelerators that we have. We have these two protons coming in, we have the strong force doing its thing, we've got to simulate that, we've got to somehow predict how many particles are going to come out. It's extremely difficult to do. And it's all because the gluon is a strongly interacting particle that you can never see one by itself, so it's got these strange internal symmetries, and the colours can mix about. Now, if you really want to understand what the gluon does, again, you're going to have to learn some pretty tricky mathematics for it, so I wouldn't recommend it unless you've got many hours to spare. So, except to say that the gluons are a lot more complicated than we'd like. They're a lot more fascinating than we expect. Uh, and they are one of the reasons why hadron physics is so difficult. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow.